Welcome to Mrs. Taylor's math class. Today we will be working on the FTCE Elementary Education K through 6 math subtest, competency 3, knowledge of fractions, ratios and integers. Now let's begin class. A group of students are working on a project. They complete 30% of the project in 12 hours. If they continue to work at the same speed, how many hours will it take the group to finish the project? So to solve this question, it's like you could do it like two different ways. Now I know most of the people who are taking the FTCE test, they're like, I am not a math person and I get it. So let's just try to make it make sense. So it's gonna take the group 30% It'll take them 12 hours to complete 30% of the project, okay? We know that 100% of the project needs to be done. So let's just go with that part. Let's just say, we're going to say, um, hold on, let me get my pen right. So 30% of the project is done in 12 hours, right? So that means if I work another 12 hours, I get another 30% done. So right now, if you add 12 plus 12, I'm at 24 hours. So let's keep going. And then if you add 30 plus 30, you're at 60%. So let's add another 30% because you worked another 12 hours, right? So let's add all this up together. This is 90% of the project done in 36 hours, right? Well, we don't want 90% of the project done. We want 100% of the project done. So how many hours do you need to work in order to get the remainder of the project done? So if you want 100, you have 10 more, 10 more or 10% more to do. So in order to get that 100%, I need to be like, okay, wait, let's think about this. Uh, I got one third of the project to do because 10, 10 over 30 is going to simplify to one third. So one third of 12 or one third times 12 is going to get me another four hours. Okay. So let me erase this 100%, get that out of the way. So what I know is that if I add, I can get the rest of the 10%, the rest of the project in four hours. Okay, and that's gonna give me a total of 100% in 40 hours. And that's gonna be your answer. But let's look at it a different way. This project also can be looked at as Distance equals rate times time. D equals RT. D equals RT. Okay, so the distance that I've done so far is I've done 30%. Okay, and the rate, I don't know. But the time I've done it in is in 12 hours. So I can solve for R by dividing both sides by 12. So I can say 30% or I could rewrite this as a decimal 0.3 over 12 is going to get me my rate. Okay. So let's make a proportion. I can say 0.3 over 12 is going to equal to. Now, if 30% of the project is already done, that means that there is 70% more 70 percent more of the project to complete so 0 0.7 to complete but we don't know how many hours so now we have set up a proportion and we can cross multiply so this would be 0 0.3 x is equal to 12 times 0 0.7 So let's do this math over here. 12 
times 0 0.7, we get 14, this is 8, and that's pretty much all you should do, so it's 8.4. So 0 0.3x is equal to 8.4. Now let's do our division. If we divide by 0.3, we get 0.3 into 8.4. You move this over, move that over, you get three into 84. That's two, six, two, four, eight. So we're looking at 28 hours. So X is 28 hours. So for the total time, for 30% of the job, it took 12 hours. For 70% of the job, it took 28 hours. And if you add these two numbers together, you get 40 hours. Again, that's the answer. Which of the following numbers represents 75 thousandths? So with this problem here, um, we need to know our place value. So let's just uh, review it for a sec. We have zero, which is in the ones place. And then we have numbers after the decimal. So let's identify the pieces. This is the tenth. This number here would be hundreds. And this number is your thousand. So when they say 75 thousandths, they want the number five, which is the last digit, to be in the thousandths place. So if we set this up with the three numbers after the decimal, five needs to go here, then seven, and everything else before the seven is going to be a zero. So your answer is B. A fourth student is experiencing difficulty in understanding the concept of place value. Which of the following is the best strategy for reteaching the concept? So, just like the previous question, I gave you a visual of where um, the place values go. So, we would need to do the same thing with a student. You would want to say it and you would want to allow them to see it for them to get a good understanding. So that is why we would pick answer choice A, using counters and a chart to display the numbers. That's what you want to do. Reviewing the content in the textbook is like giving them the same thing that they probably had before and it did not work. Providing a workbook for practice at home, that could be done after they get a good understanding of the concept. And then repeat, pre, repeating the previous lesson is not gonna get you anywhere with the student as well. But having some type of visual display of the content, you'll probably get better results. A teacher wants to build a scale model of the Earth and Pluto to compare their sizes. The Earth has a diameter of approximately 8,000 miles, and Pluto has a diameter of approximately 1,500 miles. If the teacher builds a model of Earth with a diameter of 32 inches, what should be the diameter of her model of Pluto? So to solve this problem, you would need to set up a proportion. And so what you're trying to compare is the scale model to the actual size, okay? So let's do it like this. Scale model to the actual size. And we're gonna do that on both sides. Scale model to the actual size. So we'll make this side Earth and we'll make this side Pluto. So the scale model, it says for Earth, the diameter is 32 inches. But the actual size of the diameter 
is going to be 8,000 miles. Now for Pluto, they gave us the actual diameter, which is 1,500 miles. And they want us to find the scale model. So we'll represent that with an X. So to solve a proportion, you need to cross multiply. So we have 8,000 X, and then we're gonna multiply 32 times 1,500. So here on the side, let's do the math. So this is zero, zero, 10, three. Placeholder, zero, zero, and 15. Add the two lines together, zero, 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 eight, four. So we now we have 8,000 X is equal to 48,000. We're going to divide both sides by 8,000 because we want to solve for um, X. So this would be 8,000 into 48,000. 48, so 8,000 going to 48,000, that's gonna be six times and it's gonna be 48,000, subtract, and you have a remainder of zero. So this six is gonna represent the model or the scale model for the diameter of Pluto. So that's gonna be six inches. A teacher went to the store to buy treats for her classroom. At the store, she found the following deals. Which deal is the best buy? So we got four deals here. 26 treats for $4. 48 treats for $8. 57 treats for $9. And 100 treats for $16. So we really want to know what is going to be the best price per treat. So for answer choice A, we have... Um, We'll set it up as $4 and we have 26 treats. Now let's do some division. You say 26 into four. Of course, that's not gonna work. So we're gonna add a decimal point and a zero. Bring my decimal point up. This is gonna be a one. And I have 40 minus 26. That is going to get me 14. I'm going to bring down this, add a zero, bring it down. How many times does 26 go into 140? I don't know that right off the top of my head, so let me do some math. So 26 times five is 30, carry the three. That's gonna be 130. And I can't go any further, so I'm going to put a five here, put 130 here, and I'm gonna subtract and I get 10. I'm going to add another zero just to make sure I don't have to round. So 26 into 100, that's going to be three times. And 26 times three is 18, six, seven. So this would be 78. And I'm going to stop. So these treats for answer choice A will cost 15 cents each. So one five. Now we know that's the answer because they gave us the answer, but let's see why the other three are not the answer. So for answer choice B, we have $8 and we have 48 treats. So when we do the division, it's gonna be 48 into eight. It's not happening. So let's add a decimal point and a zero, bring your decimal point up. And then 48 goes into 80, it's gonna be one time. And then we subtract the two quantities and we get 32. So add a zero, bring it down. 48 goes into 320, let's do some math. So we have um, 48 
times six and we get eight four that's 24 288 let's try it again let's do 48 times seven this is six 56 and then 28 29 30 31 32 33 so we're gonna put six here and we get 288 we're gonna subtract So this is three, two, bring down the zero, add a zero, bring it down, and we're gonna get another six, okay? So this is going to be 17 cents. So answer choice C is gonna be $9.57 treats. So we're gonna say 57 into nine, it's not happening. Add a decimal point and a zero, bring your decimal point up. 57 goes into 90 one time. One times 57 is 57, and we're gonna subtract. And we get eight, three, three, bring, add a zero, bring it down. And so 57 into 330. Now let's think, 57 is near 60. And so if I say 60 times five, I get 300. Okay, so let's try 57 times 5. 57 times 5 is 35. It's 25, 28. Let's go one more time just to make sure. 57 times 6 is 42. That's 34. Okay, so we're going to say 5 up here. 285. We're going to subtract. That's a 2. That's a 2. That's a 1. So 45, add a zero, bring it down. And so I think we go one more time. So let's say 57 times seven, and that's gonna be nine, four, 39. And I think that's all we could do. So we're gonna put a seven here. And so this answer for answer choice C is going to be 16 cents. For answer choice D, it's going to be $16 over 100 treats. So this would be 100 here and 16. So we're gonna add on the decimal and the zero, bring up the decimal, this would be one. And that's gonna be 100. It's gonna be 100, subtract, we get 60, add a zero, bring it down, and this would be six, 600, and we subtract, remain to zero. That was easy. So 0 0.16 cents. So this could be a bit time consuming, but it's worth it if you get the right answer. So A is the correct answer. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Class is dismissed.